<clears throat> I don't know if it's a alarm, but you gotta remember one thing about Philadelphia. We are a primary employment center. And in, in an economic downturn, it's the secondary markets that go first. The seashores, the Floridas, et cetera. People have to live here because they work here. That's very important. It's a primary employment center. And the second piece, I have, I'm seeing already, by the way, I'll just say it the way, the way I see it. I'm seeing a glut of small rentals, studios and one bedrooms. We built only about 5,000 in the last two years, okay? And probably too many because of this. The rentals are between $1,600 and $2,000. And five years ago, the option of going to Fishtown or Point Breeze or whatever wasn't really in the cards. It is today. And that payment for a rental of $2,000 can convert to a $300,000 townhome with a tax abatement. So the competition of renting for $2,000 or buying a townhouse is there right now, which is why you see a lot of new developers offering what? Two months free rent on a one-year lease. They gotta fill up their building. So I think we're starting to see that already. But on the other flip side, the inventory across the board is down. So that means we're gonna to start to probably see increases in prices. In the last six months, this is very good news. National Association of Realtors reported for the first time, millennials are buying more than they're renting. So once that starts- Excuse me, good news from whose perspective? <laughs> Most of the people, not oh, all. Okay. Sorry, Richard. <laughs> but you're in, you're in different markets all over the country. You'll be fine. <laughs> but for those of you in the, in the residential real estate business, you're going to see more and more millennials buying now than we're, than, than we're renting. And it's because of the economics, the low interest rates. So I don't see Philadelphia having a major downturn for this reason. There's two groups that want to live urban, not just Philadelphia, nationwide. Millennials and baby boomers. And it's very simple. Most baby boomers are living in the core. Most millennials are living in the outer rings. That's, that's the bottom line of what's going on in our city. And the bigger problem is look at the depreciation in the suburbs. I have many people I work with who now can't afford to move into the city because they've waited two or three years and their suburban home price has gone down while the city price has gone up and now the gap is too great. So that's a great line, by the way, for those of you working with suburban buyers, don't wait. It's not getting better out there. It's getting worse, and the city is going to climb faster appreciation than you're going to see in those suburbs. Well, I, want, I want to just you jump in, if I can, for one second, and repeat you know, uh, mirror something that, that Mike said, because I'm looking at so many young, bright, talented people. It, it, it's, the urbanization in Philadelphia is a prime example. It is so dependent. It's continued sustenance is so dependent on better schools. I mean, the kids, the 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 the, the young kids get to a point where they're where their child that. have child age children, and all of a sudden the option becomes: <clears throat> Can we afford private school in the city, or do we have to go out to the burbs? And we lose such a core of wonderful city residents to that, and that's going to be a continuing problem. If we can't fix our school problem. That will be, that will put such a damper on this urbanization growth. And everybody sitting here should realize that problem is not specific to Center City, it's the city. The schools have got to get materially better in every urban environment in America, or our country really stands to lose a, 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 a tremendous uh, energy and, and, and prospect. It's really, it's really what's gonna, what, what, what's gonna set the tone for, for your, your, your children and for our economic success. And Alan, we're good for 15K. Okay. <laughs> That's great. I, <laughs> I just wanna follow up on the school issue. I totally agree with the schools. This is, I'm gonna give you the statistics that are factual, came from Dr. Hyde, he told me two weeks ago, that 91% of the kids in public school have one parent. 88% of the kids in public school are in poverty. Imagine that, I mean, I went to public school. Philadelphia public schools. Almost nine out of 10 kids are in poverty. Having said that, I've now visited, I think, 52 public schools in these last two years. And I will tell you, the schools are way better than what the press reports. The press only reports those issues that make news. That's it. You have great teachers, great principals, kids learning, Pew came out with a report last year that said the following. You should use this when you're talking to young families who are thinking about leaving. 52% of young families, when the kids got to kindergarten, 
as of last year, left for the suburbs. But 12 years ago, it was 91%. Well, 12 years ago, nine out of 10 left. Now it's like five out of 10. That's a dramatic change. And I will say a lot of the schools I've seen, even Spring Garden, which is right over here, 11th and Spring Garden, a school where 100% of the kids are in poverty. Imagine that, 100%. And 32% go home at night to a shelter. One out of three go home at night, live in a shelter. The kids are learning. They have K through six, they have Apple computers in the classroom. These kids are learning and they're doing well. So I do think we need to improve the schools dramatically. I think the school system in general gets a bad rap by the press because there's a lot of great teachers and a lot of great principals out there performing. But you don't hear about those stories because they don't make the news. Really good answers. Good. I didn't expect that was good. Yeah, round of applause for that. So I would say the panel overriding says everybody's optimistic about tomorrow, right? There's nothing here that says, hey, tomorrow's a problem. I would also say that you're prepared in the event that it is. And I would say you're also, Richard, as you started now and as you, as you concluded, the fact that we can make, we can act on the change. We could create something if we want to, right? If you want to do something, you can. If not, you know, that's, that's not a good situation. So optimistic and make a change is where you guys are. So thank you. I'm going to hand this off to George and he'll ask you guys a question.